According to Brian Snicker, Marcel Ozuna will be on this team, but should he? I'll answer that and many more questions on this episode's mailbag episode of Locked On Braves. So let's get into it. You are Locked On Braves, your daily Atlanta Braves podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, and welcome back to Lockdown Braves, part of Lockdown Sports Atlanta, where we cover your favorite Atlanta sports teams each and every day. I am your host, Jake Mastriani. You can follow me on Twitter at shortstopball. Also, make sure you check out my website, shortstopball.com, where you can see some of my written work and some of my other works as well. Make sure you follow the podcast on Twitter at Lockdown underscore Braves. Send in any questions, comments, or feedback that you have for the podcast. This podcast will be created mostly from your Twitter questions that you have for this mailbag episode of Lockdown Braves. If you're new, make sure you subscribe on on YouTube. And if you are watching this on YouTube, do me a favor, hit that thumbs up button as it does help support the show a ton whenever you do that. And speaking of support, thank you so much for making Lockdown Braves your first listen of each and every day. I hear from you all the time, people who say, you know, love to listen on their way to work or the way home from work. I really do love hearing that feedback. It means a ton to me, so I really do appreciate it. Before we get into today's mailbag episode, I want to remind you this episode is brought to you by FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On today to get started. This is a full mailbag episode. We got, I believe, 16 questions from Twitter that we want to get to, and then hopefully I'll have some time at the end to get some to some of the questions in chat as well. But I want to give a fair amount of time to the questions from on Twitter. So let's jump right into these here and the first one coming from drew ford who says do you think ozuna will be cut before opening day and i'm actually going to combine these first three here chad says with white and pilar showing good signs so far do you think it's more likely now as opposed to the beginning of spring training that ozuna will be moved out and then cody says what do you think ozuna's long-term future is with the team even if it may he makes it past spring training so obviously a lot of questions about Marcel Ozuna right now and and you know obviously so because of what he means and what he brings or rather doesn't bring to this team and all the off-field issues and the on-field the lack of on-field performance everybody's wondering what's going to happen with Marcel Ozuna and my prediction and I still this is still where I am, even after a week or so into spring training action. I think he's cut by the all star break. I do think that he'll be on the team to start the year, no matter what happens in spring training. I think the money is going to talk. Perhaps, unfortunately, if somebody like Eli White or Kevin Pillard does outperform him, and even if perhaps they look like the better player and maybe the player that's going to help this team out more i just i i think ozuna is still going to get that roster spot right or wrong i I think he will and brian snicker has pretty much even said as much already justin toscana of the ajc asked him that on thursday and brian snicker's quote was marcelo zuna will be on this team so that leads us to believe you know he's going to be on the 26-man roster when they head north Uh, at the end of March. So again, right or wrong, agree or disagree, I think Ozuna is going to be on this team when they, they start the regular season. The question is, should he be? And that's a hard question to answer. Personally, I'm not a fan of the off field issues that he's had. And I'm all, you know, all four giving people second, third chances. I believe we're all failed or flawed people. We all make mistakes, but he needs to, he needs redemption somewhere else. Um, And for me personally, I would have already cut him if I were the Braves, but it's not my money. Uh, And I know that's difficult to do and a hard pill to swallow. So I would have already cut him just for the off field stuff on the field. I've said for a while now, He does one thing for you, and that's he hits the ball really hard. 
He, but he doesn't give you good defense. You cannot play him in the field. He does not need to be in the field. He can't run well. He has no arm. He doesn't hit for average. He does one thing well, and that's that he makes hard contact when he makes contact. And that has been a problem over the last year or so. And, and I have you know no questions. And I've even heard some people in the chat on Twitter say that, you know, who else on this team? could you put in there and feel like they have the potential to hit 30 home runs? And you're right. I know Pilar won't do that. I don't think Eli White's going to do that, but he's looking really good early on. You know, Luplo even, who has good power from the right side, I don't think will do that. Marcelo Zuna could do that. And again, I've said this all offseason as well. If you give him 500 to 600 at bats, I think he hits 30 home runs because the guy does hit the ball hard. And look, he had, a, he had an over three day on Thursday, which we'll talk about later, but Two of the balls he hit, they were over 90 mile per hour exit velocities. When he makes contact, he hits the ball hard. And again, you give him enough at bats, he's going to hit you close to 30 home runs. But he gives you nothing else. He brings no other value to this team. And I just fully believe the only reason he is still here is because of the money that he's making. And that's a hard pill for Alex Anthopoulos and the Braves to swallow. So, to answer the questions of Drew, Chad, and Cody, I think Ozuna will be on this team to start the season. I think he will be gone by the All-Star break. One thing, and I believe this was part of that quote from Snicker, he said, while he'll be on the team, how he performs in spring training will determine how much playing time he gets once the season starts. For me, if you're not starting Ozuna as the DH and he's not in your lineup, why is he on this team? <laughs> if, if he's not going to play, why do you have him? Why would you keep him on this team? So, again, it's kind of a frustrating situation. It's it's one that I don't think is going to go away in spring training. Again, based on the projection prediction I've had for a while and Snickers' comment, I think he's going to be with the team through spring training. All right, moving into some of the other questions here. Large Lars says, what's the current status of the Braves' TV deal? When does it end? I know it isn't a good one, plus Bally is bankrupt. Does that mean we get to have a good one like some of the big market teams do? So um, the Braves TV deal is actually supposed to get a big boost this year. I don't know if that's going to happen because of the bankruptcy. Their deal was set to end at 2027. Again, with Bally's owners going or filing for bankruptcy, they're likely going to lose the rights to the Braves sometime this year, and then we'll see what the fallout is from that. Next one from Robert Mullis, who says, when the Braves announce the contract of pre-R players who have no negotiation rights, interested to see if they will reward Kyle Wright for his 21-win season with a slightly higher salary than the normal one of the year before arbitration. So a lot of teams will do this for players who are in pre-R, you know, who have really good seasons. Sometimes they'll give them a little bonus, maybe a couple thousand extra thousand dollars or so maybe you know as much as even ten thousand keep in mind that this new cba the minimum now is seven hundred and twenty thousand that's pretty big raise from where it was even just a couple of years ago already so could we see the braves you know give somebody like kyle wright you know somebody in pre-arbitration who is pre-arbitration eligible a little bit more possibly but they already got a pretty big boost through the cba um, but I do not know when they will announce those. We probably won't find that out until the end of season. And then Corey Slovic says, who would you prefer to see hit leadoff this year primarily, Harris or Acuna? This season, I prefer Acuna um, just because that's where he's comfortable and I want him to be as comfortable as possible going into this season. Long term, if Harris turns out to be the guy he was last year, if he's a 280, 290 hitter, you know, getting on base at a 330, 340 clip, stealing 25, 30 bags. I would like to have him eventually become the leadoff hitter and put Acuna more in that run-producing type role. But the Braves have Riley. They have Olsen. They have Ozzy. They have guys who can be in those roles and drive in runs and drive in the speed at the top of the lineup with Acuna in, and Michael Harris. So I'm fine if it's Acuna long-term, but... As he gets older, I could probably see them, you know, start to to switch roles a little bit, especially if that knee does continue to bother Acuna. Again, I'm talking maybe two, three years down the road. 
then maybe we see him move more to the middle of the order as a run producer and move Harris to the top as that speed guy. But some good options for sure. But I'm going to stick with Acuna in that role for now. I got a lot of other questions that I want to get to on today's podcast. Some great questions submitted by you talking about Iglesias. Will he regress at all now that he is the the closer for the Braves? Some other questions on Dylan Dodd and starting pitchers, Michael Soroka, and what his status is. We'll talk about all of that here next. If you're looking for a delicious treat but don't want all the fat and calories, then you got to try Built Bar. We just got through the holiday season, and I know one of my goals this year was to eat healthier. Built Bar has certainly helped with that. Not only are they delicious tasting, but they're great for you as well. Covered in 100% real chocolate with flavors like peanut butter, brownie, cookies, and cream, which are my two favorites. And they only have 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, with a whopping 17 grams of of protein and now not only can you go to built.com and order yourself a box today like you always have been able to but you can go out to walmart get yourself a four bar box if you just need a little snack or you want to get some for maybe a couple of days maybe these will last you the week but you get yourself a 13 bar box with hit flavors like brownie batter and churro then you can go out to the store and grab you a box today however you get yourself some built bars make sure that you do so today All right, a lot of good stuff on the podcast this week. If you haven't, make sure you go back and give all those episodes a listen. Really do appreciate all of the support. Again, if you're new, make sure you subscribe on YouTube. You're listening on the podcast. Make sure you subscribe wherever you get your podcast. Jumping back into the Twitter questions that we have. Again, a lot of really good ones out there. Annabelle Self says, do you think Iglesias will regress at all as closer? He was amazing last year, but he usually pitched the eighth inning to set up Kenley Jansen. It's a great question here because Iglesias was lights out. And I mean, literally lights out for the Braves once he came over, gave up one earned run through the rest of the regular season after the trade. I would not expect him to be that dominant. Now he has been dominant in the past before in other seasons, and he has been good as a closer, but I feel confident in the fact that he is going to be good. Uh, Again, maybe not quite as good as he was with the Braves last year, but I really don't have too many worries about Iglesias moving into that that ninth inning role. Again, he's done it before, and I feel like if he did have some hiccups, maybe he regressed some. Again, I feel comfortable with A.J. Minter, feel comfortable with Joe Jimenez and possibly others as well. If Yates, if he gets back to his old form, has a lot of closer experience, but I, I feel fine with Iglesias. I really don't have too many worries about him handling that closer's role. Bellfire says, impressive start from Colby Allard today. Do you think he has a real chance to be the fifth starter with Elder and Anderson struggling in their first outings? I mean, I I think he's in the mix for sure. I think think Elder and Ian Anderson would have to be pretty bad the rest of the way, and they each only had one start. I think if Ian Anderson just doesn't show much progression from what he was last year, and perhaps he needs more time in AAA to work on things and the adjustments that he's making with his pitches and his arm slot and all of that, and they need to send him to AAA, then I, and, and Soroka's not ready, then I still think Bryce Elder is the leader right now just because they're f- more familiar with him and they've seen him have some success at the big league level. But, you know, if Elder does continue to struggle, I think Allard is certainly in that mix. But I think another guy who threw on Thursday perhaps could jump him in that rotation as well. I think, you know, if if Elder, Anderson, and Soroka don't work out, which I think is worst case scenario, then I think it's I think it's Schuster. I think it's Dodd and probably Colby Allard would be that next three up fighting for that fifth spot. Tommy Johnson says, I know you've talked about the six starter recently. I'm curious on if the six starter, how you'd feel about a six starter used as an opener instead of the traditional starter. So uh, this is a good question as well to talk about today after Jesse Chavez's outing because Chavez could be a solid opener, somebody you bring in for three innings, and then maybe you go to one of the young guys, you know, Dylan Dodd, who's come into relief in spring training. I don't think that's his ultimate role, but if you wanted to ease him into a game, perhaps you could do that. I don't think they will, and I don't think they're going to go 
with six starters. Again, it's been kind of a rough beginning to spring training for some of those guys already with Elder Anderson and Soroka. So I think right now they're just looking for five healthy, good starters at the moment. But I don't see that being an option. I would rather just Schuster or Dodd or Allard start those games. I don't think an opener uh, is going to be the way that Snicker goes with that six six starter spot if they did use a six starter. Kate Harrington says, do you think it's possible we see Dodd or Schuster make the 26 man if Ian continues to struggle and Soroka isn't ready, possibly someone else? So similar to the question we just talked about a minute ago, if Ian Anderson continues to not show progression, if Soroka is slow to start, which my prediction right now is that he will be, and if Elder you know, doesn't, you know, doesn't show improvement after his first start as well, which it was his first start in spring training. Again, if Soroga's not ready, if Anderson struggles, I still think Elder is the most likely choice there. And then if not Elder, right now I think Dylan Dodds moved into that spot behind Bryce Elder, and then I would say Jared Schuster, and then probably Allard. So, yeah, I mean, I think there's a chance we see Dylan Dodd. He's certainly been impressive. I think we need to see him start a game in spring training. If he starts a game here pretty soon, then that tells me that the Braves are taking his his case seriously to get an opportunity to start the season with the Braves or at least you know be that first guy called up if needed. So that's certainly something to keep an eye on is how they handle Dylan Dodd the rest of the way. Do they give him an opportunity to start a game? That will certainly be interesting and very telling for me, at least, on their feelings about him. Obed Mendez says, is Vaughn Grissom the next Braves shortstop? That's the question. And that's the question we got to find out this season, I believe, because the shortstop market next offseason is not great. And there's really not anybody else in the system that's going to be ready. You know, I've, I've been kind of you know, high on, not high, but I've been somewhat impressed with Braden Shoemake this spring training in a short sample size. We know what he can do defensively, but he is not a long-term solution at shortstop. Maybe Ambioris Tavares is, but he still hasn't played a full season, full season league for the Braves. So there's nobody ready. I don't think Cal Conley or Luke Waddell are answers either. I think they're both utility bench players. So the Braves need to know this year, I think, if Von Grissom even if he's not ready at the start, do they see him getting better throughout the year to say, okay, he can be the long-term solution at shortstop? I think that's an answer that has to get a question that has to get answered this year. But as of right now, we just simply do not know. Georgia Sports Highlight says, how many innings do you see Michael Soroka pitching depending on how he feels and how much the Braves want to play him? I've been pretty adamant over the last several weeks now in saying that I just can't see Soroka, even if healthy all year, pitching more than 120 innings. For a guy who hasn't pitched in two and a half years, I can't imagine they're going to go out there and give him a full 30, 32 start workload. So I, I would say 120, 130 innings maximum for Soroka if he's healthy and productive all year long. I think that's the most that we would see him throw. E. Goldie, a couple of questions here. First one, how would you rate the Braves fan base compared to the other big league teams asking for a friend who resides in Chicago? So a little bit tongue-in-cheek here from E. Goldie. You probably have seen the comments by now from Dansby Swanson, who I'm assuming was asked about the Cubs fan base, I don't know, and I apologize, I didn't go back and look at the question that was asked. I don't know if he was asked to compare the two or not, but he certainly did, and it was not very favorable for Atlanta fans, essentially saying that Cubs fans are real sports fans while Braves fans are just, or Atlanta fans rather, are just kind of sports fans. And rub me the wrong way, certainly. Um, you could have answered that question without taking somewhat of a dig at Atlanta fans for sure. Um, but I think Atlanta fans are great. I said on yesterday's podcast that Liberty Media's revenue is at an all-time high, and that to me speaks to how passionate this fan base is. Yes, it's coming off a World Series and everything, but you've just seen that grow year after year, especially with the new stadium and what they've done around that. But I just think Braves fans, Braves country right now is, is having somewhat of an explosion like we saw in the 90s, and it is great to see. So I think Atlanta fans 
are certainly great, at least Braves fans. Again, I'm I'm a Birmingham native, so I'm not in Atlanta, so I can't speak for the whole of Atlanta, but Braves fans in general uh, seems to be on a huge uptick, which is certainly great to see. Eagle, also asked, who in, in our bullpen are you most excited to see this year beyond the usual suspects like Mentor in Iglesias? Um, another great question from E. Goldie. I think for me, Nick Anderson is the one. If you've been listening all offseason, he's somebody I'm just very high on because he's been so good in 2019 with the Rays. And I know that's been a little while now, but if you can just get him back even close to where he was, I think he can be a high leverage seventh, eighth inning type of guy. I'm really curious to see Kirby Yates as well. I know it was not a great comeback for him last year just did not have that feel uh, coming back from Tommy John surgery. Does he improve in that second season? What does Dylan Dodd look like in a sophomore season for him as well? So I think there's a lot of interesting guys there, but I'd probably say Kirby Yates and Nick Anderson. If I had to pick one, I would say Nick Anderson is the bullpen arm. I'm most excited to see. You're looking forward to seeing the most. Coach Gordon Bombay says, other than Chavez, which non-roster players do you think make the 40-man? I think we see Dean make it sometime this year. He's looked good in spring training. Um, great pick in Dean. We're going to talk about him a little bit more here in a minute. I think Kevin Pillar, um, I just think with his veteran leadership, if he just looks somewhat good in spring training, I think he has a real opportunity to make the team. Again, to be that, that veteran uh, voice in the clubhouse. So I think Kevin Pilar, uh, other than Javi, Jesse Chavez, is who I think could take a roster spot coming out of spring training. And then last one here from Bellfire, who says, based on what has happened so far, do you have any changes to your projected opening day roster? So I had Jordan Luplo in initially on my opening day roster, but with him being Slow in spring training, not anything of his fault. And the emergence of Eli White, I'm really starting to lean more towards Eli White instead of Jordan Luplo, maybe even Kevin Pillar, who I just mentioned. But with Eli White's defense, his speed, and if his bat starts to come around, I mean, you're looking at a really good player there. Maybe somebody you can even earn every day playing time. So that might be the one change that I would make at this moment is Eli White over Jordan Luplo, but Jesse Chavez was my last bullpen arm in, and I still think that's the right call, and, and I still stick with that prediction as of now. All right, next one to get into Thursday's game notes, and then also get to some of the comments from the chat section here. Before we do that, I want to tell you about FanDuel. It's the midway point of the NBA season. It's more than that now. I believe there's only about 20 or so games left in the NBA season, so now is the perfect time to download the FanDuel Sportsbook app, America's number one sportsbook, because new customers get the no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 deal. That's bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It's safe, secure, and super easy to use. Then you can bet on everything from the money line to point scores and threes drain. You can also get in on MLB totals for this upcoming season. Plus, FanDuel even lets you combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with the same game parlay. So don't miss the chance to get your no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. All right, getting into the final segment here, I want to take a moment to just say thank you so much for all the support that you give me we've had this is the most we've had in here live in a long time i really do appreciate that uh the numbers everything has been so great all the the love that you've shown me and the support as well i see some of you in the chat section you know asking docs cards Cade shavers asking people to subscribe support the show that means a lot to me i can't tell you enough how much that means so i really do appreciate all of the support Let's quickly go through Thursday's game notes. Full disclosure, I did not get a chance to listen to Thursday's game, so all this is coming from what we've seen on Twitter and just going over the box score. But we do know that Colby Allard, Allard and Dylan Dodd had solid games for the Braves on Thursday. Colby Allard, three innings, no hits, one walk, no earned, three strikeouts, so very solid for him. I feel somewhat comfortable. I still think he's down the list for me in the starting depth rotation, but... Again, 
I think he's eighth, ninth on the depth chart, and I would feel pretty comfortable if he needed to make a spot start or two for the Braves this year. Dylan Dodd, uh, maybe the most impressive player in spring training so far. His second outing, two and a third innings, did give up three hits, but didn't walk anybody, which I think is very huge for a young pitcher who's trying to compete for a spot. Four strikeouts as well. So no walks, seven strikeouts through four and a third innings in spring training so far. That is a great performance from Dylan Dodd and certainly going to get him a lot of attention. Again, don't know if he'll win that spot, but I think he's at least moving up the pecking order if something does happen for him to jump in and fill in. You know, if a spot start or if somebody gets injured, I think Dylan Dodd is certainly moving up the list. And then Eli White, it just seems like every game, Eli White that he's in, he's doing something spectacular. He had a two-run home run on a Thursday. A ball hit 106.3 miles per hour off of Carlos Carrasco. So a big league pitcher. Um, you know, Eli White just continues to impress. Grissom continues to do well at the plate. And this was never an issue for me. And I've said this on here several times. I don't necessarily worry about the bat for Grissom. I only worried if it suffered just because there was so much focus and emphasis on his defense, but that has not been the case early on in spring training, at least. The bat has been hot. He had a hit, a sack fly, and a stolen base on Thursday. Only one ground ball hit to him, and he remains perfect. Uh, knock on wood uh, with ground ball opportunities so far in spring training. So looking good there as well. And then Justin Dean, it seems like he's doing something every game as well. Didn't start this one, came in, only got two at-bats, uh, walked, and had an outfield assist. So strong arm as well. Uh, outfielders are looking uh, pretty good for the Braves so far in, in terms of impressing early on in spring training, fighting for that outfield spot. Uh, Justin Dean, Eli White, Kevin Pillar certainly standing out early on. And then Ozuna, we talked about him, over three of the plate with a strikeout, but hit one ball 97.3 miles per hour that went about 330 feet. So you just missed that one. Another ball hit 91.1 miles per hour again. When he hits the ball, when he makes contact, he hits the ball hard, it's just not enough. And that's the only really good thing that he does. All right, jumping into the chat section real quick. Got a lot out here. Uh, so I'm going to try to run through some of these. Apologize if I missed your comment. As always, please comment down on YouTube. And I, I try to answer all of those there. Uh, Corey Carter says, Love Snit and AA sending a message to Ozuna from the Braves. And I think that's in reference to the fact that Ozuna, every game that he's played this so far, the spring training has been on the road. You typically do not send veterans with guaranteed spots on road games in spring training. So I think that is a little bit of a message sent to Ozuna there saying, you got to pick it up. You want to earn some playing time. Um, so I think that's what Corey is referring to there. Uh, and Joe me saying, yeah, I'm sure Marcel loves all the, the bus rides. Um, Frankie Torres, glad this topic came up. Was just thinking about this myself. White has been playing solid, including today. Not looking good for Ozuna. Hurts to leave that money on the table, but he's not helping his case. And I agree. And I, I just really hope the Braves do the right thing here. And if they feel, and it's, look, spring training is a crapshoot. You take it for what it is. But if you think Eli White can help you win games more than Marcel Ozuna, he needs to be on the team come opening day. And I'm not saying that. The Braves have to make that decision, and they are there on the field. They see the work being put in. They're watching all these games. For some reason, we still can't watch all spring training games in 2023. But I just, I really hope if they feel like Eli White deserves that roster spot and he does more for the team than Ozuna, I hope they don't let money keep the Braves from having the best possible team on the field. That's my only real big concern there. Corey Carter says, the more time that goes by, it's easier it becomes to move on from Ozuna. Um, 187 says, will we keep Anderson? Um, not sure which Anderson you're referring to there, but I do think they keep both Ian uh, and Nick Anderson. I hope so, at least. Um, Georgia Bulldog will. Marcel needs to show some improvement in his behavior and how he plays. He needs to care more about this team than how much he does about um, this team. So, Look, he's saying all the right things that he's going to work hard. He wants to improve, wants to do all that. But he is past the point of words meaning much. We need to see it on the field. Um, Corey, um, Kate Shaver says Ryan uh, Castile. He's 
Uh, he's been in, in camp as well. Backup first baseman, I think, is probably what he is looking at if the Braves needed him. Um, AG7 says this team would be so much better with White and Pilar on the roster from a defensive standpoint alone. And that's my thing. If you're going to keep Ozuna on this roster and you're not going to play him and you're going to put him on the bench, what value is he bringing you when you could have a guy like Eli White, who you know is at least going to give you speed, who's going to give you defense, a guy like Pilar, who's going at least going to bring veteran leadership, good veteran leadership, and can play defensively and has had a lot of success as a starter in the big leagues. I just hope they make the right decision there and the right call, and, and we'll see. Time will tell. Um, the battery says there's a difference between adding someone to the roster and inheriting someone to the roster, and that certainly feels like where we are with Ozuna right now. Um, a lot of you saying Ozuna doesn't deserve that spot. Um, Georgia Bulldog Will says, I recently bought a four-bar box of cookies and cream bill bars. Thank you so much for the support, uh, Bulldog Will, and for saying that. Really do appreciate it all the support. Anytime you want to support the show, uh, supporting one of our sponsors is certainly a way to do that. So appreciate you letting me know. Corey Carter um, says, I've listened to too many podcasts. I just tried to fast forward uh, to, through some of it. I get it. Look, and I, I tweeted this out the other day. If you haven't already, when you listen to podcasts, listen to them on 1.5 speed. Not only in my mind does it make the host sound better, but helps you get through many podcasts a lot quicker. I listen to several podcasts a day and I listen to all of mine on 1.5 speed. So if you haven't tried that, make sure that you do. Um, the battery says, I just spent two years convincing myself to call him Mike. Now we have to call him Michael again. Look, I've already done it 20 times and, and Michael, Mike himself, Mr. Soroka uh, said he knows it's going to happen, uh, but just more so wanted to make it official, you know, on anything that's written down. Uh, that his name is Michael, so it's okay. Uh, Georgia Bulldog will appreciate the support. Saying if you're new here, go subscribe and hit that like button for Jake on YouTube. Uh, really do appreciate all the support. Corey Carter, uh, imagine a different world that he kept his sanity and repeated his MVP caliber season. People would love him. He brought this on himself, and he he certainly did with it, talking about Ozuna with his off field stuff. I also think the Braves bought into a really good short sample size season and paid for that. Uh, and I think they are paying for that at this point. And, and like Georgia Bulldog Will says, I don't wish anything bad on Ozuna. I really want him to get better as a person. And for Brave's sake, I want him to get better as a player. But I just think at this point, you got to cut your losses and let him get a, another opportunity somewhere else to kind of turn things around. Uh, but like like I've said, and AJ, AG7 saying, he can't play defense, provide zero value on this team if he's not hitting home runs if he's not making consistent hard contact. Uh, Kate Shaver says Grissom is the next shortstop. I think so. I believe so. But again, until I see him throughout this year, he still has to prove it. And even he himself said it. And he said it in season, in episode one of season three of Behind the Braves, which you haven't checked that out. Make sure that you go to the Atlanta Braves YouTube page. That was a great episode there. But even he said, I got to come prove it. I got to earn it. And that's still where I am. I think he will, but I got to see him do it. Uh, Georgia Bulldog Will says, my favorite player is Austin Riley. I bought an Austin Riley jersey a few months ago and ready to wear it to the ballpark. That's great. Uh, I, I love that. I don't have any jerseys. Only jerseys I've ever bought were Hayward and Fran Cor, and neither of those worked out too great. Although I think Hayward's career in Atlanta is severely underrated, um, but you know they obviously both ended up leaving the Braves and not being exactly what we thought they would be, so I have quit buying player t-shirts, jerseys, whatever. Jeffrey Humphrey says, Kevin Pillar sure does seem like a great clubhouse guy with veteran experience. Nice if he plays well enough to make the roster as a bench player. And I agree. And as much emphasis as Snicker and Anthopolis put on clubhouse chemistry, I think that gives Pillar an edge up just because of his experience. Look, they kept Guillermo Heredia on the team all last year because he did one thing, and that's he kept everything loose. And he was, you know, great with the swords and played some good, solid defense in the outfield. So if they can keep a ready all year, I certainly think Pilar has a good chance of making this roster. Um, 
Kwame says, I don't understand the constant clamoring to wave Ozuna. He has a MVP level bat on the upside and a 20 plus power bat on the downside. We have to pay him whether or not he gets waived. Again, in my mind, and I started off the podcast saying this, you give him five to 600 at bats. I truly believe he's going to hit 25 to 30 home runs. But when he's not, when he's not giving you that, he's giving you no value because he doesn't hit for average. He doesn't have speed. He can't play defense. Again, it's not that I don't think he can give you 25 to 30 home runs, but the Braves have that. I mean, I just don't see the real value in keeping Ozuna on this roster, especially if you're not going to play him. That's what worries me the most about Snickers' comments is, you know, what he does in spring training determines his playing time. If you're not going to play him, don't put him on the bench, then there's no point in having him on the roster, in my opinion. Um, Georgia Bulldog Will, we love Dansby, and we got a great fan base. It will keep growing as the years go on. I, I certainly agree with that. Um, and yes, Kwame, I think Justin Dean has certainly made some, some waves, and the new rules could benefit him You know, with the stolen base. I believe he already has four in spring training. So Justin Dean has certainly been impressive. I think he's at least earned himself to get a long look in spring training. And again, something happens in the outfield, perhaps be one of the first names that they call on. Um, looking for a couple of more questions here before we wrap things up. Again, appreciate everybody sticking around in the chat and answering or asking all these questions. I really do appreciate it. I think I'm going to cut it off there, though. There's a lot in the chat section. I apologize. I couldn't get to more. But again, if I didn't get to your question or comment, please put it in the YouTube uh, chat section below, and I'll make sure to try to get to all of those there. But that will do it for this episode of Locked On Braves. Again, thanks as always for making Locked On Braves your first listen of each and every day. Now go make your second listen to Locked On MLB podcast, where MLB expert Paul Francis Sullivan brings humor, passion, and a unique perspective talking about every team in Major League Baseball. Again, thanks for listening. Follow us on YouTube at uh, Locked On Braves. Follow us on Twitter at Locked On underscore Braves. You can follow me at Shortstop Ball. Also, make sure that you rate, review, and subscribe to the Locked On Braves podcast wherever you get your podcast, and we will talk to you next time.